Hi everyone, this is Doc Nina. Welcome to my short review on the essential anatomy of the female breast. To download my lecture deck, please go to my WordPress site, Doc Ina Ubigayne. Main reference for this lecture is Comprehensive Gynecology, 7th edition, chapter 15, and I also listed here the other minor references that I use for this lecture. So this is the outline of my lecture. Okay, so breast development begins in utero during the sixth gestational week from the integument along the epithelial mammary ridges. Ducts in the Sinai are derived from the ectoderm, whereas supporting tissue arises from the mesenchyme. Ductal tissue and secretory lobule development occurs under the influence of the hormonal changes that occur during puberty. Actual milk production is initiated by hormonal changes that occur during and after pregnancy. Breasts are actually large modified apocrine or sweat glands located in the superficial fascia that is anterior to the deep pectoralis major. And this connection is a loose connective tissue plane which allows free movement over the chest wall. So in other words, the breast is not firmly attached to the deep fascia. The breast tissue is suspended from the clavicle and the deep clavipectoral fascia by the suspensory ligaments of Cooper that weave through the breast tissue and attach to the dermis of the skin. Now, this fibrous septa maintain the natural shape of the breast. Clinically, malignant involvement of these ligaments or the Cooper ligaments often produces skin retraction when a patient has um, a malignant tumor in the breast. So paralateral projection of the glandular tissue, which we call the axillary tail of spens, pierces the deep fascia and extends toward the axilla. Glandular tissue composes approximately 20% of the mature breast, with the remainder being adipose and connective tissue. Adipose tissue volume is the major determinant of breast size. Breast density refers to the proportion of the fibrous or glandular tissue to adipose tissue. The periphery of the breast is predominantly adipose, whereas the central area contains a higher proportion of glandular tissue. And this typically, uh, the glandular tissue regresses and is replaced by adipose tissue after menopause. The breast is composed of 12 to 20 varying size triangular shaped lobules or lobes distributed radially from the nipple. Each lobe contains its own a uh, duct system draining the 10 to 100 lobules with alveoli or acini. These functional lobules have epithelial or ductal and stromal components and are affected by hormonal changes such as the estrogen, progesterone, and prolactin, resulting in development, maturation, and differentiation. Secretory cells drain into the alveoli, which drain into the terminal ducts that then coalesce into larging or larger collecting ducts and join with ducts from other lobules to end in lactiferous ducts, terminating at the excretory ducts of the nipple. 5 to 20 areolar or what we call the Montgomery glands produce an oily secretion that's designed to keep the nipple supple and protected, particularly important during breastfeeding. They also produce a volatile compound that has been implicated in stimulating the infant's appetite through olfactory pathways. The glands are located in the areola and even in the nipple. They are actually or generally sensitive and blockages or irritation result in significant problems. How about the breast's blood supply? The principal blood supply of the breast is derived from the perforating branches of the internal mammary arteries that originate from the internal thoracic artery. The superomedial perforator supply of the internal mammary vessels is particularly robust and accounts for some 60% of the total breast blood supply. And this rich uh, blood supply allows for the various reduction techniques, ensuring the viability of the skin flaps after surgery. The additional sources include the lateral thoracic and thoracoacromial arteries that originate from the axillary artery 
and the posterior third, fourth, and fifth intercostal arteries, which are branches of the thoracic aorta. The internal mammary artery sends perforating branches along the first, second, third, and fourth intercostal spaces, crossing the pectoralis major and irrigating the inner half of the breast, including the nipple areolar complex. The intercostal arteries, which are the branch of the aorta, as I've already mentioned, also crosses the pectoralis major and irrigate the deep surface of the breast, complementing the arterial vascularization of the nipple areolar complex. The inferior and central portion of the breast are the least vascular areas. The venous drainage of the breast, on the other hand, is divided into two systems, the superficial and the deep. The superficial veins run along the anterior surface of the fascia, following the path of the areola under the nipple areola complex, and this is called the venous plexus of Hallier. Now let's talk about the lymphatic drainage of the breast. Lymphatics of the breast converge in the subareolar plexus of SAPI. Approximately 75% of the lymphatics, which are in the outer quadrants, drain to the 30 to 60 ipsilateral axillary regional nodes. The axillary nodes are classified by three anatomic levels defined by their relationship to the pectoralis minor muscle. So in for the level 1 nodes, which we also call the sentinel nodes, these are located lateral to the lateral border of the pectoralis minor. So these are the nodes that are located along the axillary edge of the breast where the mammary gland joins the armpit. The level 2 nodes are located posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle and these are the nodes that are higher up in location. So the level 3 nodes... Uh, include the infraclavicular nodes medial to the pectoralis minor muscle. So these are nodes that are located at the top of the armpit uh, above the pectoralis minor muscle and under the collarbone. These lymph nodes in the armpit uh, form a chain. So if the level 1 nodes are free of cancer, then the level 2 and 3 nodes will not be affected. Remember that the lymphatic channels drain the lymph fluid and therefore the tumor cells that are uh, that if um, present are potentially circulating in it, no? So primarily they, they circulate in the first nodes of the chain known as the sentinel nodes. A traditional axillary lymph node dissection usually removes nodes in levels 1 and 2. Now for women with invasive breast cancer, this procedure accompanies a mastectomy. The remaining lymphatics drain to the internal mammary or parasternal nodes with a direct drainage to the mediastinum, the medial quadrants of the opposite breast, or the inferior phrenic nodes. Now, this provides a route for metastatic disease to the liver, ovaries, and peritoneum. Lymphatic fluid usually flows toward the most adjacent group of nodes, forming the foundation for utilizing sentinel node mapping to evaluate for nodal spread in breast cancer. And lastly, we talk about the nerve supply of the breast. Sensory innervation of the breast is dermatomal in nature. It is mainly derived from the anterolateral and anteromedial branches of the thoracic intercostal nerves T3 to T5. Supraclavicular nerves from the lower fibers of the cervical plexus also provide innervation to the upper and lateral portions of the breast. Researchers believe sensation to the nipple derives largely from the lateral cutaneous branch of T4. So that's it for my lecture. So for this uh, short review, we talked about the embryology, blood supply, venous drainage, lymphatic drainage, and nerve supply of the female breast. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe in my YouTube channel and my WordPress site, Docina Obigaine. Thank you.